Okay, so back to it now. We're on number four. I have initial keyframes and everything. One thing you need to think about, though, is that it wasn't a big deal on the first, I don't know, couple of seconds that we have something that's going to start the keyframe at, at the first frame and go all the way out to wherever the change is supposed to occur. But if we, the further and further we get out from the beginning of the clip on these, on a lot of these other layers, the weirder and weirder the transitions are going to be because they're all going to gradually be coming in when really we want to have them come in in phases, right? So, um, so if you notice um, on this n number four, if I turn the eyeball on, well, it's saying that it's visible at 11% opacity from frame one. It's only because I had the eyeball turned off that I, it wasn't noticeable at first, um, but if I start it this way now and just leave it there, it's going to be there from the very, very beginning. And you won't actually see the change affected. So what I want to do is I need to look at the, the way that the timeline is based on the last thing that changed. So if I look at my last thing, which was the number three riverbed, it was changing about this point on the timeline. So if I'm trying to be consistent, I probably want to give the the uh, number four the ability to have its full change somewhere somewhere around here okay if I do that then I need to go and select this and put a new keyframe there and that's where I have my 11% but the eyeball is not visible so what I need to do then is go ahead and make it visible now one of the things that you're going to need to do is you're going to need a third keyframe because we need to set the visibility here to zero and we need to set the visibility somewhere somewhere in here to zero too so that the actual animation doesn't start from the first frame and gradually go all the way up to to this frame on the right we need to have it start somewhere in here so that we're actually getting a sense of time and phases so let's add another keyframe see this one's good all right because we've got our 11 percent opacity but let's say that somewhere uh somewhere in this vicinity is where we're going to have the other one start and this might not be in the right spot but let's go ahead and put our keyframe there while the playhead is on there i need to change this opacity to zero also i need to change this opacity to zero otherwise it's going to start at full opacity and then it's going to go down and then it's going to go back up again, which would be really weird. So we actually need like two anchor points in our keyframes. So let's just actually see how that looks. That's not too bad. Now, one thing I need to do is do it not just with a playback, because if I have any kind of like weirdness with the way that my hand is doing it, it's not even, then it it's going to seem bumpy. Okay, so... I'm not 100% sure that I like that. I might need this to fade in sooner. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do here is have that 11% number four start at zero sooner so it starts fading in sooner. And let's just see if that makes any difference. And it does a little bit, maybe. But I think that we also need to have it fade out sooner, too. And you might be thinking, gosh, this is a lot of little persnickety stuff. Well, that's it's animation. So let's try putting it there and see what happens. All right, let's try playing it now. I think I'm happier with that. It seems like the time makes a little bit more sense. Okay. And... If you want really quickly before you go too much further, I really recommend that you take a few minutes. It's and it's going to take probably a, a minute or two, maybe longer depending on the speed of your computer, to go ahead and render something out just so you can see that first little bit because it might it might actually animate a lot faster than you're expecting it to whenever you see it in a real movie player that's not just in this little playback tool. So I'm going to go ahead and save my file, and then I'm going to go up here and up to file and export and render video <clears throat> and it's going to pull this up and it's going to ask me you know what do i want to call the file i'm going to just call it 
the name of the existing file, but with MP4 at the end. It's going to choose to go to the folder that this file is in, um, and then you can tell it to have another folder. I had already created a, a video folder, so just make a folder for it to go in. And then it says, you know, create a subfolder, and I made a subfolder called render files. So you can set this up however you want to. You'll see how mine works. And then I chose for mine because I have a vertical orientation and I have it set to a height of 720. I chose the HDV, HDTV uh, 720 that is going to be 1280 by 720. If you are using a format that is just a widescreen format, you can choose something different. You can also tell it to be custom if you want. So technically, I could have had my little vertical thing as a custom one. If I ever wanted to put it on YouTube or something, I would have to have it fitting in a standard frame. And I have my frame rate set to 50. Um, the standard frame rate is a lot uh, shorter time period than that, but I have mine set to 50, so it's a lot easier for me to see what I'm doing on the timeline. So I'm going to leave everything else as is. I'm, I have mine set to high quality, um, except that it just changed my document size when I accidentally clicked that, so I'm going to change it back. And then I'm going to say render. And it's telling me it already exists. I'm just going to replace my old file. And by the way, if you currently have your old file open, like in QuickTime Viewer or in some kind of media viewer, it's going to tell you that the render engine couldn't do it, probably, that there was some sort of problem. So let's go find the file. OK, so here's my video. And then here's my render file, so we can take a look at it. And I'm not going to care about what's happening in the rest of the video, just in the very first few seconds. And I'm okay with it going kind of slow. All right. Okay, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Let's keep going. I'm going to uh, collapse my, my number three down here. I'm going to leave four open because I need to see where those keyframes are for my next one. And then here's number five. Now again, if I turn number five on, that's how it looks from the get-go, right? So if I go to my keyframe, let's take our play back head here. And if I were to leave that, that's how bright it would be from the very beginning. And I don't like that. I don't want it to be that bright. I think that it should realistically probably start coming in maybe somewhere in here. Somewhere in here, maybe. So let's make a new keyframe. And that's going to be my zero opacity and then based on that let's say that it goes to here and then I'll make another one and then that one is the 25% one this one I'm going to set to zero select it and then this one also I need to select set to zero okay now let's see what happens I think I'm going to like that. So let's play from the beginning. All right, I think we're good. All right, now I'm going to collapse number four so I can give myself a little bit more room on the timeline. And now I'm at the place where I've got number six coming up. So if I show number six, that one's a little bit more subtle where it sort of kind of gets a little bit darker. So I'm going to... Uh, probably make that transition happen a wee bit faster. So this is where the opacity finally finish changes, finally fin finishes changing here. Um, and it's right around the, the three minute mark, or not the three minute, the three second mark. And so what I'm gonna do is probably right about here, sort of overlap it somewhere in here. I'm going to create a new keyframe for rooftop number six. And then I think I'm not going to have it go quite as long uh, because it's not as significant of a change. And then we'll go back and we'll set that to zero. And we'll set this one also to, oh. Let's go back, like I said, set that to zero. And let's check it out. 
right about here is where we need to pay attention. That's fine. And be, and like I said, it's a short animation here. Let's try actually pulling it in just a little bit. So I think that might be really what's warranted. Yeah, I think I like that better, happening just a little bit faster. So I'm going to save what I've got. I can collapse number five, and we can start looking at doing something with number seven. And remember, I need to turn on all of the number sevens so I can see what's happening. And so we'll scroll down. There's a seven here we have to pay attention to. <clears throat> Oops, I didn't mean to put that keyframe right there. We need to take this actually. All right, so this is where six stops changing. I think maybe number seven can start coming in right about here, possibly, because it's a much heavier filter, uh, or a much heavier effect, I should say, of having all of those things present at once. And let's, let's go ahead and put all of the keyframes in at once while I've got the playback head in the right spot because they're all going to change at the same time since they're all part of that group. And then let's figure out, based on where 6 is, I think that maybe this change should happen because it's so significant over the distance of like almost a full second, somewhere like that. And then we can make our other keyframe. There's the 1, and here are... Oh, and then there's another one, too, that I'm missing. Yes, this one. Okay, so now I can come back to these keyframes and set them to zero. And while the playback head is still there, I'm going to just do all of them. That's kind of cool. But it doesn't make sense to have that showing by itself. And let's take the playback head down here. Zero. That one is set to zero for some reason. That means somehow I think I messed up somewhere else. Let's make sure I didn't mess up here. Nope. Okay. I guess I'm all good. And this one should also be set to zero. I'm just going to double check this one also. OK, so let's see how that looks. Ah, you know what? I think that there's too much of a lag here. And that heavy transition that happens later needs to come in a little bit sooner because I think it happens just a little bit too fast. So maybe if I put the playback here, playback head here and drag these back, maybe some of these other effects can start coming in sooner rather than later. So let's go all the way back. No, I think I think it still isn't still isn't soon enough. So let's try because it's such a heavy effect. Let's try coming in here. And so you can see that what I'm doing is I'm just kind of fooling around with this until I get it right, and that's what you're going to have to do too. And and it's, a, it's kind of fun, you know? I mean, that's the whole idea. So there, save that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and keep doing this on my own. So I don't think that you need to watch me do all of them. I will pause and show you if I come across something that is particularly challenging that we haven't already addressed. The only thing that I did differently that would be worth mentioning is that I put the uh, opacity keyframes on the entire folder. So I only had to do one section. And that was that. Um, the uh, resulting video, if you want to see it, uh, it ends up looking like this. Okay.